Well, with that, we're going to keep Mindy around yeah, um, because uh, Mindy and I were chatting last week, and I am, for those that know me, know that I am an idea guy. I, As a matter of fact, I have a journal, and one of these days, I started it. I started, but I haven't finished it. Maybe I need a coach to kind of keep me on it. I never finish. Yeah. But I, I'm working on a book of just my, of all the years I've been masterminding with agents and, and seeing agents, a book of my top 25 best ideas. And when I say my best ideas, they're not my ideas. They're just ideas that, that I've seen other people do. I've adapted, I've modified, I've made them work for me. And, and I just, I just, I started it. I started it on an airplane about four or five months ago. Uh, but I, that's another whole story. Maybe I need a coach. Uh, but anyway, so, so we're going to talk about that. And, and, and Minnie and I were talking about, you just said that you just, you know, it's kind of something that you've been researching and kind of where we're, where we're at in, in life today. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, um, I love this, uh, the first point I, uh, gosh, right when, uh, I would say like six months in, uh, to COVID, uh, I, I'm good friends with a lady who used to be an executive with one of the largest boys and girls clubs in, in the nation. And we were just having a conversation just about how, how COVID was impacting them. And, and just like every, everybody was having those conversations. And she said, we have, we have adopted, we adopted a, a, a slogan, which I've now ripped off because I've used it more than three times was you either pivot or you perish. And we can't, and to your point, we can't be stubborn and set in our old ways because the market is constantly changing and we have to adapt. We have to change with it. We do. Um, if Netflix is in town, you cannot remain blockbuster because we all know what happens there. And that's kind of the way that's I, a, that's a great one. I don't know if I made that up or not. We are just, we are spitting out quotes left and right. I hope today. Everyone has a pen handy right now, <laughs> but uh, the methods that have worked for you for the last maybe several years might not be working right now or not at the rate you need them to, to be where you need to be financially. So if you haven't already, it's time to open your mind up a little bit um, to some change. Um, for the past decade, we can all admit, I think business has been pretty consistent in this industry and something counterintuitive to me. I recruit, right? I do business development. Recruiting suffered in the downturn this last couple of years. And I had to sit down and go, wait, what, I'm, what I've done for 10, 12 years isn't working for me like it used to. What am I going to do, right? So I, I imagine you're all in kind of a similar boat. So uh, what are we going to do to keep up with this change? The most adaptable people are the ones that are going to survive. So if you are one who's like, I'm never going to do this, I've always done it that way, you'll hear people say that. Uh, you might want to go find a day job because it's not going to work out for you. Yeah, Todd, I, you know, for me, I, you know, we all remember the market crash of two. Well, we've identified that Minnie's really, really young. Yeah, so I don't know whether she remembers the market crash in 2007. Um, and it was devastating, obviously. And it was devastating to the point for me that I completely exited out of the real estate space. Uh, didn't, didn't have that ability to adapt. I have friends that got into the real estate pay, it pays, real estate space at that time with a different plan and a different way to tackle the market. Had I stayed in and just adapted, I would probably be in a much different spot today than I am now. Fast forward, I could have sworn to myself, I would never do that again. And then when COVID hit, Ryan and I were like, we sat down and said, okay, you know, pivot or perish. We're, we're just got to, we've got to adapt. In this market, we're constantly, constantly adapting. But you've seen so many agents kind of with that mindset of, I ain't going to change. I ain't going to try new things. It's too risky. Yeah, that, that <clears throat> I believe there's a book. It's called uh, The Seven Deadly Words, if I recall correctly. And I, and I know it's certainly referred to. And, and that the seven deadly words are, I've always done it that way. Oh, yeah. And so the fact is, is that if, if you're trying to make the world compete with the way you've always done it, it's just not going to work. It's got to go the other way. 
All right, so build more on the areas or areas that are working for you. So I think I think that's imperative because I'm not telling everybody to just take just remove everything. Right. Okay. Yeah. Figure out what's working, what's not working, and and how. But but even what's working, Mindy, has to adapt with the changes. I.e., you know, or for example, open houses. Open houses always work, but you know, we've seen we've seen technology. And so open houses have evolved and you have to be able to evolve with it. You do. It's funny. Mike Ferry said this to me a couple of months ago. He goes, well, if electricity was invented, are you saying you wouldn't use it? And so <laughs> as these new inventions, as these new things keep coming out with technology, with AI, with all these, we should be using it to um, implement in our business. But if, if the majority of your business comes from referrals right now, great double down on working your database. Okay. This might mean making extra phone calls, um, to each of them. It might mean finally getting serious about cleaning up your database and sending up reminders for each person. Uh, it might mean taking one person from your database out to coffee once a week. So you're just doing more than you have been instead of waiting for your phone to ring or waiting to get that text or email, uh, work the source and take control of it so that you can control the results better than just kind of crossing your fingers and hope your phone rings today. But, but Todd, we, we have to, though, have a system in place to figure out what is working for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of the year, I've had X amount of closings. You have to figure out where those closings have come from, because sometimes we think that, oh, yeah, this is a primary lead source. This is working for me. But if you really dig deep, it's not. And then for me, I had one where I didn't know uh, my cause marketing strategy. I was doing a, I was up driving to a class, and I'm like, how many closings did I have last year for through cause marketing? And I think I had 10 transactions. I didn't even realize it was working. And I'm like, well, crap. I got to double down on that, but it's, you have to take that inventory. Well, you do. And that's one of the reasons why I like statistics. At least, you know, I'm kind of schizophrenic. I'm a huge driver, but I'm also very analytical. So in other words, what it means is if I'm going to spend an hour of my time, I want to get the most maximum probability of return I can get. So for me, it's picking those lead generation options that get me closest to the consumer, closest to potentially uh, more business. And so, um, you know, whole open houses, sure, that, that's always been a, a really good thing. But you always have to hold those numbers accountable to something. Uh, it's either your own personal statistics. If you look back, I don't care if you've been doing this for six months or six years or 60 years, their history leaves clues. Go back and take a look at what you've done, divide it into the number of days, divide it into the number of hours, divide it into the however you want to break it down that's important to you. Um, and you can get a lot of these things done pretty simple by going to a coach because it's hard for someone that hasn't been in a coach mindset to understand how to do that. But it, it can it doesn't have to take forever. You don't have to pay a coach forever. You just need help now. Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because people probably get ty sick and tired of hearing this. But but CRM oh. helps you do this every person in my CRM, I have a lead source. So at any given time, I can see how many closings I've had in the last 12 months from this lead source. So I've, this is how I've always done it, whatever phrase you used earlier, Todd. Um, it's time to adapt from Excel. Um, you know, and yeah, use a please. system design to help you with it. All right, we're going to spend the most uh, most time on this one because I do want to talk about new strategies. Where do you get, you know, new uh, marketing ideas? I'm a believer, uh, and I think Mindy and I agree on this that that an agent should have approximately five primary lead sources that they're drawing from. Um, so the bottom two, how effective are they? Uh, maybe is it time to implement two new ones and replace with ones, you know, replace the ones that aren't working as well. But it's it's one identifying, hey, do you have room? Do you have need for some new marketing or prospecting strategies? But then where where do you get them? Mm -hmm. The homework for this point could be to list out the last from 2022 to year to date, 2023, every closing you've had put next to it, was it a buyer or a seller and where to come from? So it's just, it's that easy. And if you want me to look at that for you, I definitely can and give you some thoughts, but, um, I'll go back to my previous point 
if the if the referrals are working for you, great, mm -hmm. double down as I mentioned, but that's not it. That's not all. Um, if you leave this talk with anything uh, moving forward, it is that I want you to try something new this week. Um, and so I, I would highly doubt your average realtor is working five active sources right now. So if by that, I mean your database is one source, your referrals are one source. Okay. Your open houses, that's another source. Let's say you have a farm. That's your third source. You need four or five that you're working all of the time. So some of you are going to need to add one or two, but maybe need to add four. Uh, but start with one, um, this week. Okay. And, and have it be something new. So for every agent I have, that says, I'll never do an open house. Those don't work. I'll show you 10 that built an incredibly insane business. You're, if, 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 if open houses aren't working for you, it's as simple as you're just not doing them right. Right. It's as simple as that. Right. Yeah. Everything has a, a number again, you know, open houses happen to be 48% of all buyers tour an open home. This is NAR's number. And of those 48%, you should be working. If you're a host at an open house, you should be working with 25% of those 48 who toured your property. So if it's not, why is it not? Is it the person that you're looking at in the mirror? Was it uh, that you didn't do all the things that you need to do to have a successful open house? And if you don't know what all those things are, you just simply have to take a class and, and, go, and go figure it out. But I think every, uh, Mindy, you mentioned six, seven different sources. Think of a motor. If you had a two-cylinder, two-stroke motor, you know, and, and one cylinder or one spark plug went bad and call it lead generation, that engine just stops. The whole <laughs> engine stops. If you have a four-cylinder, they don't make three cylinders. They have a four-cylinder that I know of. If they make a four-cylinder motor and you pull one, the engine still stops. But if you have a six-cylinder motor and you pull the spark plug off of one of the cylinders, it, the engine will continue to run and get you home. And that's really what we're talking about, getting to home. What's home? hitting your objectives and your numbers so that you earn the income that you set and desire for yourself. Absolutely. Um, you know, what is one thing that you can do this week that you're willing to do that you can continue to do for about eight more weeks? Um, don't, I, I'm not asking you oh, to implement a, a quantum point. shift in your business. I'm saying, let's, let's say uh, I'm going to call, start calling my database. I don't normally call them. I'm going to call them. Um, Maybe you build an hour in your schedule and then you repeat that for eight weeks. It's got it. You can't do a one, one off. And I'll talk about that in my next point. Um, but maybe you're already calling your database, but you could use some really great questions to ask them to help those conversations give you a little bit more of what you need from them. Uh, how, let's start small. But uh, I have a I'll talk about this, but I have a sheet of ideas I'll email out after this. Yeah, yeah. And well, let's just not skim over that. That's no, the big that's, that's the big takeaway uh, today. And, I, and I'm going to talk about some of idea of where I generate my ideas from in a moment. But Mindy has put together a list of just ideas. It's just a, a, an idea box. Call it whatever you whatever you want. And <clears throat> excuse me, her email address is on the screen there at the bottom left. And if you just, if you'd like this list or you would like an opportunity to chat with her, Mindy is a very, very successful real estate coach. Um, and she will guide you. She'll give you some advice and, and things like that. Um, so what are like, give me an idea or two on, on this list or am so, I putting you I on the spot? No, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, post a video for the first time on your Facebook. Um, create the first reel you've ever done for Instagram. Uh, and I'm giving you social media things, which I know nothing about. Let me tell you now. something. I almost called you bro. Okay. I'm now, uh, I'm like, <laughs> a new one. I like no idea what a real or a short was at all. And, and we've launched this podcast now. Granted, I'm hiring someone to do this for me, but I'm on the TikTok machine and I'm on all Instagram. Right. We're doing reels. Our first week we had over 23,000 views. Wow. I'm like, I don't even know what it is. I don't even know how it works. And now friends of mine are stopping me and going, oh, man, you're on TikTok. I'm like, I, I am? <laughs> you know what? I love that. And I'm having um, social media inept clients po as homework, post your first video and send me the video. And I mean, they're just horrified. But they're so far, it's 100% the feedback is, whoa, this many people looked at it, this many people commented, this many people text me. You know, um, maybe for some of you, it's finding an expired listing in your neighborhood and going to the door and just knocking and having a conversation with that homeowner. Oh, I thought you were about to say, put that stranger on a reel. I'm like, that's Whoa. awesome. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, <laughs> well, actually, actually, it might not be. But here's the thing. Don't do it. <laughs> OK, from the brokerage to you. Don't do that. Yeah, it's just something new that you can implement, that you will, that you're willing to do for the next several weeks um, so that we can measure it, which we'll talk I, about. I've been, uh, you know, I've been, we've been having these conversations with Keith Flynn, our director, director of digital media here, yes. and he's just been preaching video, video, mm -hmm. video. And, and I've never, I never really got into it because I do not watch videos. I just don't. So my mind says, well, if I don't watch them, Nobody else is going to watch them, and and it can't be. I just couldn't be further from the. If you send me a text, yeah. hey, check out this thirty second video. I'm telling you, bro, I'm not watching okay, it. Okay, so so I believe that, and I believe that's me too. However, I have been encapsulated by your shorts. Oh, thanks. So no, seriously. So what happened? And why the shorts though? that I'm wearing or my video shorts? Stop it. Okay. No, no. no. <laughs> we'll answer the question. Yeah, I'm not even sure I remember that. I, I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm not even sure I remember the one I said started for myself. But no, the reason was because uh, you know it's 30 seconds to a minute and a half. It's a short. You know, you're you're not going to be. I don't have to spend five minutes to see if I like the topic and the content. It's blasted sure. at you you know, the most concise minute and a half on a particular topic you're going to get. And so to me, it's, oh, I can watch that. I'm walking on my way to the car. I can watch that, you know, in between. It's so much more user friendly. And I think because of that, it's easy for people to say, yeah, I'll subscribe to that. All right. So some of the other things that, that I do, and I think why I have a lot of great ideas that I've implemented into my business. One is I'm here at the office all the time. So I, I see our agents, I talk with our agents, I go to, uh, I go to our office ha happy hour uh, almost every single month. Yes, the alcohol and food is free, so that's a, that's a bonus. But the conversation, the conversation I have with other agents and we get in these conversations, what's working? What are you doing that's working? What's not working? And the amount of ideas that I get, uh, I'm very selective on the classes that I I'll attend, but we have some really good classes here at West USA. And if I can go to a class, if all I need to do is walk away with one idea, you something, say. just one idea, uh, I anytime that there is a mastermind event, uh, I love masterminds because the ideas that I and again, it's, I just need one. If there is a mastermind event and you're invited to it, shame on you for not going because that is what a mastermind group is designed for. So put yourself out in situations where you're going to learn ideas and what other people do. And then there are a ton of, there's a ton of very naughty uh, agent Facebook groups uh, that I would implore all of us to stay away from. But there are others that are specifically designed for share the sharing of ideas and learning and find those. You know, that's kind of what I've been trying to, uh, I, I believe I've achieved it, although I'm constantly intending to do better. Uh, on the Wednesday CE classes, the remote CE classes on Wednesday, we create the conversations that we have are just like that. Agents will come and I, I promote this in the class um, is, is, you know, take, ask a question, you know, maybe provide an answer. I'm going to be provocative. I'm going to shake everybody's world. And yet at the same time, I want people to collaborate so that we walk away with the best ideas in that space. All right. So uh, point number four is my weakness. I have the ability to wait till it's too late to pull the ripcord um, because generally ideas a lot of ideas cost money, and if they don't, if they're not costing money, if they're not costing a lot of money, they are using up your time. And I, I just lack the ability to pull that ripcord when I probably should, uh, and and so forth. But you you implement new ideas, many, but you also have to have a system, a tracking system, and know you know how frequently. Am I reviewing the effectiveness of these? 
and and at what point does this specific idea I give it this timetable? Uh, because you can, also you just can't implement an idea. You have to that idea has to evolve. Uh, you know, like for us, like we're doing this, this podcast, we're looking at the numbers each week, we're reassessing, readdressing, and we do have a timetable on this. If this doesn't work by X amount of date, then it might be time to stop investing in it. But we're also reevaluating on a weekly basis and, 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 uh, you know, so you have to have, you have to have some sort of tracking system in place, I guess. You do. So the, the short answer is, how do I know if these new strategies are working? Well, you'll start to get leads. So uh, that's a that's a great way to know if they're working for you. But you have to give it a long enough duration of time to know that for sure. So you can't do one open house and come back and tell me open houses don't work. You can't uh, post one video on your Facebook and come back and tell me that that's not going to work. It's got to be something you've done long enough. Now, I like 12 weeks better. I like 90 days better. But if you'll give me 60 days, um, I can probably give you a good idea if that idea is going to stick for you. Okay. But, but I want to, I want to warn everybody. It's also not a matter of in, in 90 days. If I give you 90 days, it's going to be almost impossible in 90 days to get a check. So it's, it can't be how many closings no. have I had in 90 days. It's uh-huh. like, well, how many legitimate leads and where are those leads at? Yeah, good point. Because exactly. Mindy, you didn't mean that. You no. meant you yeah. actually meant constant evaluation. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. if you don't let something season in the old days of advertising, you know, media advertising, you know, you couldn't just put it in one run. If you put it in multiple, uh, like say for 90 days, three months or whatever, six months, uh, eventually some people that saw you before are going to go back maybe when their time frame, it, it, all of a sudden they come to the realization they want to buy a house. They're going to go to the place they last saw you if they liked you. And if you're not still there, you just lost that deal. Yeah. And and it's really simple. If you want, once again, reach out to me. I have a form for this. The way I track success in any of these categories is how long did I spend doing it? How many people was I able to talk to in that time frame? And did I generate a lead there? Perfect. Closings are going to come down the road, but those are the three things because I also want, you know, Mike and, and Todd, if someone spent three hours doing one thing and they talk to two or three people, that's not a good return, right? So I need to make sure in that hour or two or three, they're talking to enough people per hour to where they have the ability to generate leads from it. And all we do it is simply numbers tracking, tally marks. It's, It's not complicated at all. And I have forms for you if you want. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this would also be, this is why you mastermind with other agents, you know, um, see what their success rate is. Uh, you know, like for, for us, for our team, one of our primary lead sources that we call it our recon 12, it's identify, you call it your top 10 ambassadors, uh, Todd, but we have a very systematic approach, but for us, you generally don't find success until about six months, but now, if you said, well, after three months, I'm giving up, it's not working, then you might be missing out. You, now you would have an opportunity to talk with people who've done it, and we know through our track record, it's, it's about six months. And then month six through through 18, it's, it's now – but you got to – sometimes you just got to – you got to break through that barrier. And then the last thing I'd say is if you are implementing these and you are having a lot of conversations but they're not converting – you have to keep in mind it could be your conversion skills, and maybe that's something that you double down on and you figure out how to overcome. Just to go in an awful lot of different ways, but um, you know, I do believe that uh, to Mindy's point, those three things give you an opportunity to self-reflect, to see if the message is clear, and then to see what the production result is. Every You don't have to convert at every conversation. That's the one thing I just want to make sure everybody's aware of. If you try to convert every single time, like, Mindy, I call you on the phone. I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm starting something new. I want to say, hey, good to see you. I haven't talked in a while. You know, what's going on? And I listen to you, and the person says, oh, this person, you know, I haven't talked to Todd in a while. He really cares. You, you know, I forgot about that. You know, and then at the end of that conversation, I go, so do you know anybody who wants to buy a house? Do you know, <laughs> don't do that. I mean, because you just ruined the, the that rapport build to that particular point. But there's so many more pieces to that that could go sideways. There just is. reach out to Mindy. That would be my recommendation. If you track hours spent, conversations had, leads generated, appointments set for six or eight weeks, I can sit down and show you what your weakness is and what your strength is. Um, either it's going to be you're not having enough conversations, you're not spending enough time, you're bad at converting. Right. So, but you got to track it long enough for us to be able to read your numbers and read. There's a story that they tell, right? Your numbers tell a story. So, um, last, last point. 
I saved it for last for a reason, because it's hardest for everyone to hear. Um, in any sales-based job, FYI, we are direct salespeople, <laughs> okay? I know, I hire people every day. I'm not salesy, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not, what I, yeah, you are. If you're a real estate agent, you are in the business of direct sales, okay? Because your license, your real estate license says <laughs> real estate salesperson, salesperson on it. <laughs> Just in case you didn't Can't know. get away from that, Todd. <laughs> nope. Well, not until you get an associate broker license, but. <laughs> sure. And so uh, in any sales job, it's going to be a numbers game. And sometimes the numbers come a little easier and sometimes they're a little bit harder. And so we have to change with those fluctuations. Okay. So right now we might be having to have more conversations in a week than we did two years ago. And that's the reality of the business. Okay. Um, I have a couple of clients right now who stopped getting the kind of results that that they needed in the last couple of months. So we sat down and did this exercise that we're talking about today. We sat down and determined what are you going to do that's more over and above what you're already doing in a week. Um, one client added um, two one-hour blocks of database calls uh, to her schedule. One added a whole extra hour of prospecting a day, which is a lot. But it's she's going to game. It'll be she's going to do sixty changer. deals this year, and her goal. She was trending off after the first quarter, and she decided the 60 was important enough for her to add that hour in every day. Um, and so that's that's what she did. Uh, your time spent talking to people, having conversations with people, will need to increase right now. How you choose to structure that is totally up to you, but more time needs to be put in your week on it. And, and it's not to be eyeballed it's to take intention of. So what I want you to do homework is that you can go, I want to spend, you know, an hour more a week talking to my COI. I'd rather you say, I'd rather talk to 10 people from my COI twice a week. Uh, it's a little bit more measurable if you do it by mm. the contact. Uh, That's but, a good point. But be intentional about it. So don't just let fly by the seat of your pants. And if you have time, like put it in your schedule to Mike's three pack point, you know, um, make sure that you're doing it for a while. All right. This is uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, I want to remind everybody, so go ahead and, and email Mindy uh, at MindyT at WestUSA.com. She's got the list of ideas, but put that in the subject line, list of ideas, because I also, there's a lot of you that really just need 30 minutes of, of Mindy's time uh, that she'll you know, provide you with some of these forms, kind of put you on that path. Uh, and I, I'm always amazed uh, every time you're on, Mindy, I mean, we're lucky to have you because we th we know of you as our corporate uh, recruiter, and most agents don't know that you coach agents from around the country. And I'm always amazed on how many people just don't take up. I'm always talking with you and, and so forth. So, uh, so we want you if you if you want to chat with Mindy, go ahead and just email her, Mindy. Thank you. This is really really great stuff. We are all here for you. Uh, so take advantage of it. If you're not willing to take advantage of it, well, there lies the problem. <laughs> All right, leave everybody with the quote of the day. He or she who does not expect to win is already defeated. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Go out and sell a home.